Hi, I'm Kevin with Genesis Rescue Systems, and we're here with our friends from Chicago's Bravest Stories podcast to present a 12-part video training series on real-world practical applications for passenger vehicle extrication. Engine 1, engine 4, truck 2, truck 10, ambulance 82, battalion 2, fire 1020 North Main, help is on the way. Oh, hey, Corey. Hey. Can oh, you just man. step on sign of refusal of services, please? <laughs> Thanks, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> In the third video, we're going to cover peel and peak and the importance of that when exposing SRS cylinder cans that have not been deployed. It will affect uh, patient outcome and rescuer safety if we do not address these tasks. In addition, we're going to cover two different ways of removing laminated safety glass, which now the Highway Institute has mandated that all four sides of a car have laminated glass. If we're going to do any procedures with the roof removal or a dash operation, we want to focus on removing the front windshield from the vehicle if it has not already been done in the accident itself. Because that is laminated glass, we're going to have to use tools now like the Beluga laminated glass tool that operates on the Milwaukee M28 drill. It is a nice way of removing the windshield very, very fast and it puts a safety ribbon in there so we don't have dust or glass particulates shooting vertically that could potentially harm the rescuers. Our other option for laminated glass removal comes from our friends in Oklahoma City who often advocate using a six inch wood pruning blade on a sawzall. And although it is more rogue of an operation and has a tendency to throw shards of glass much higher, it is a very, very quick, effective way of getting ourselves through that laminated glass. Something that we want to cover now is properly removing the hinges of a vehicle. And it would also be applicable for cutting the nader bolts or the latch system on the door. What we want to make sure is anytime we're cutting something on a vehicle, that the tips of the cutter actually pass around the back side of whatever it is that we're trying to cut. We don't want to get into a position where we're trying to force the tips to cut through the hardened material because that's what is called tip loading, which eventually becomes side loading, where the cutter will throw itself to the side. Genesis Rescue Systems uses forged tool steel blades, which do not have a history of catastrophic blade failure. However, if you do have a tool that uses a machined, stamped, or engineered blade, there is a very, very high risk of that blade snapping off if the tool goes into a torsional movement and snaps itself at the what would be considered the knuckle. So when we take a look at the hinge here, we'll make sure that the tips of the cutter completely wrap around the hinge itself. It's very important when you specify battery or hydraulic rescue tools that you have equipment that has good variable speed control. The spreader, as you can see, we want to take our time with and go in a very slow motion in order to grab the material and not shred through the, the sheet metal. Whereas the cutter, we want to have that full speed, which is incredibly important for cutting hinges, hardened material, and ultra high strength steel. Oftentimes in extrication classes, we hear instructors reiterate the importance of the peel and peak process. The reality though, is that it's very difficult to do your peel and peak motions with the door actually in place. When we remove a door, we're cutting the latch and we're cutting the hinges to make our removal. We're not doing any component cut to the A column, the roof rail, the B post, or the C. So in reality, if we get that door out of the way, the peel and peak process can be much, much faster. It's just like stripping a, a window at a house fire. If we can get to this weather stripping with that door completely removed, we just put our peel and peak tool behind the weather stripping, fully remove the rubber material, and then we can get to all of our internal plastic components to take a look to make sure that there's nothing within that system that's going to be troublesome for us during the extrication. One thing that we are looking for is the SRS canister that has been undeployed. Oftentimes it will be found in the A post, sometimes in the B area, right around the roof rail, but most predominantly in the C post area towards the rear. If we cut through this, this is a high PSI compressed air cylinder. Will it kill us? Probably not, but it's gonna put a tremendous amount of plastic in car components all over the vehicle once it detonates. So we want to avoid this at all costs, and that's what we're looking for during the peel and peak process. This episode of Back to Basics Training Tips has been brought to you by Genesis Rescue Systems and Chicago's Bravest Stories Podcast. Thank you for your support. We'll see you soon.